Let's look back to the uh, dramatic news during the course of the day that Roberto Di Matteo has been sacked as the Chelsea manager. M Michael, what was your reaction to it? Well, I think, like most people, astonished. Um, from the outside, you, you think Roman Abramovich has, has been yearning for the Champions League for, for many, many years now. He's, he's won the league, he's won the domestic cups, and you, you just think that that was the one thing missing, and, and obviously um, Roberto Di Matteo brought him that, um, and you'd certainly think that would, would buy him time to, to try to, to shape the squad and, and to, to go on to the next level, and, and obviously not. I mean, it's... Um, I, I was I was as astonished as, as anyone. Really. Puts you up being a manager, doesn't it? It certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rude, do you think that the club ever really wanted Roberto Di Matteo? Did they ever see no. him as anything more than a stopgap? You know, after he won uh, the Champions League, uh, it took a while before they decided to get the job to him. Almost a month. Uh, you know, my feeling was already beforehand that I think they already had an arrangement with someone. I still think it was Mourinho, for the simple reason that uh, on the moment that uh, they won the Champions League, Mourinho, after that, signed his uh, contract with uh, Real Madrid all of a sudden. And, um, and it took them long to decide for the new coach. I think they tried to get maybe Pepe Guardiola, and they were trying to get everything, but they were thinking about it, so, hey, they just won the Champions League, what, I, what can I do better than them? So for that reason, there was no way they would go to, to Chelsea at that moment. And then in the end, when nobody wanted, they came back to, uh, to Robbie. And uh, of course, uh, I think he did a great job. He didn't want the job in the beginning. He was just an assistant coach that they wanted to, and, uh, you know, to take over. And he'd done extremely well. So, I, I, you know, I'm astonished as every, anyone else. He's also a, a friend of mine. And uh, hopefully uh, he will get over it. You know, we all know that as a coach, the only certainty you have is that you're going to get sacked. But as soon as, you know, as, as Robbie done, no. After he won the, uh, the, the, the Champions League and the, I won the, um, the FA Cup. The Cup, yeah. yeah. So therefore, <laughs> and the funny thing is also with Chelsea, the one who uh, didn't want anything stayed the longest. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> when you, you look at his record recently though, Graham, club officials will say, you know, look, the record is poor. Lots of defeats. Four defeats in the last eight games. A couple of draws against Swansea and Liverpool as well. Lost at West Bromwich Albion <laughs> at the weekend. But is that the correct way to look at it? Because I think if you look at anything in football in the short term um, and make changes on short term results, um, you're not going to succeed. I think you only have to look at the most, six, most successful team out there, Man United. Fergie was there for, from 86 to 90 before he won a trophy. And then it was seven years before he won a, a league title, which Man United were craving for. I think hadn't done it for 25 years. So, you know, you've you got to get... If you're looking to build something at a football club, you've got to give the manager a bit of time. Now, if you go back a year where Chelsea were under AVB, they were a club in turmoil. And I don't think anyone in their wildest dreams would have said, whoever it is that comes in is going to win you the FA Cup and win you, win you the European Cup. That should have bought you time. They're sitting third in the league right now. I just think it stinks of people who don't really understand football making football decisions. Mm. That, that's how it appears to me. Because if they think that there's anyone out there that can come in and wave a magic wand and make them Barcelona overnight, they're absolutely off their rocker. It just doesn't work like that. Well, it sounds like the person they're going to ask to do just that is Rafa Benitez, Michael. Uh, we understand he may even be taking training in the morning. Um, what, what sort of qualities would he bring to the club? Well, I was with Rafa Benitez for, for about a month or so before I left for, for Real Madrid. Um, I mean, the first, first crossing I had with, was when I played for Liverpool against his Valencia team. And I always remember vividly coming off at the, the end of the game and speaking to the, the lads and, and saying, you know, that was the hardest game we've ever played. You couldn't see a forward pass. I couldn't get into any gaps or spaces. And it was just so hard to play against one of his teams. Um, and then he took over and it was exactly how we all thought it was going to be, you know, really working on defensive shape and, and um, you know, a lot of mid midfield work, you know, where to press, where to, where to stand. Um, I'm not, you know, a lot of people are talking, uh, saying that Pep Guardiola is obviously um, Abramovich's his first choice. Um, whether it's a stopgap for that, um, who knows, but 
I don't know, part of me is saying, I'm, I'm questioning whether, whether he's the, the, the right man, put it that way, for, for Chelsea. I mean, he's, he'll organise them well. Um, but I don't know. I think I think they've got a lot of creative flair, and I'm not quite sure whether he's the right man. Yeah. So he will do the same thing that Robbie did when he took over, because Robbie was also defensively all the time. It was not pretty, but because he came half time, he thought to himself, "Okay, just do that," and they were luckily, you know, to go through, and they won the won the Champions League. And then all of a sudden, they said, "Okay, we have to." I think Abramovic gave him the assignment to play more attractive football, bought also the players for it. But it, like you say, it doesn't come over. It doesn't happen. Over but, but it also but begs the question: Look, Scolari, uh, Mourinho, Ancelotti. Why would Pep Guardiola want to go with a club that dispatches its managers because off so quickly? You get paid very well, <laughs> and it would appear that it doesn't damage your CV if you've worked tearing up the sack. Mm. But I think there's another way to look at it. If it is Rafa, I mean, I don't think it's any secret that, that Roman Abramovich bought Torres. It was his man. He wanted him. Fernando Torres has not worked out for him. If you look at Rafa Benitez and what he managed to get out of Fernando Torres in his time at Liverpool. He was a player at Liverpool. And maybe there's an element, well, I'll get him in, he will get the best out of Fernando Torres, and I'll be proven right that he's a proper player, Fernando. Mm. But I, I just find it amazing. I think you'd have to search long and hard to find a sacking that comes anywhere near this one. OK. Champions League winner less than six months ago. Uh, let's cross live to the Etihad Stadium, shall we? Because Gary Neville is already in position there. Evening to you, Gary. Evening, Jeff. I can tell you what, the revolving managerial door at Stamford Bridge is quite a contrast to your old club, Manchester United, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, I agree with what the lads are saying. It's a ridiculous situation. A few points off the top of the league. I think he can get 10 points in the Champions League group if he beats Nordschland in the last game. And to not go through with 10 points is something that's happened here at City last year. It's unfortunate. He's in a good group with good teams. But that's what you expect at Chelsea. Um, I don't think it should be any surprise to anybody. You got the feeling that it was only going to last as long as the owner really gets bored with it and then wants somebody else in. And he's done the same as he's done many times before. 